Hello there, this is Beth Gaff and I'm the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And the first thing I want to let you know about this class and pretty much all the stream classes is that they are geared to go at your pace, which means that you can slow this down, stop this, go away from it and come back to it later and continue where you left off. Um, just like always, if you're a part of the computer class pass, you want to be listening for that secret code in this class so you can get that to me so you can be on your way to some prizes and great incentives for taking the class. Um, this is a very, very step-by-step -step basic class, so you shouldn't have any problems being able to follow along. But if at any time you're feeling a little overwhelmed, uh, please go ahead and pause this and contact me so we can get you set up for an appointment, just you and I, and we can work on it together. Uh, but without further ado, I want to welcome you to using your keyboard and mouse. So while we're taking this class today, a few things that you're going to want to keep in mind is the actual um, correct way that you're supposed to position yourself when you are uh, doing the keyboard motion. So for instance, you want to definitely be keeping your eyes on the monitor, if at all possible. I realize that this may be new to you and going ahead and looking and, and it's called peck and poke. Uh, you can still do that, but try as much as possible um, to try to keep your eyes on the monitor. This is um, going to help it out, help you out quite a bit. Also make sure your wrists are flat, your fingers are curved, your feet are flat on the floor, your back is straight, and your fingers are on the home row position. And we're going to talk about the home row position here in just a little bit. But I wanted you to know the correct positioning for your body when you are actually keyboarding. So why don't you go ahead right now and uh, just pause this video and get yourself familiar with with the correct positioning of your body for the keyboarding. Um, go ahead and keep your eyes on the monitor, keep your wrists flat, your fingers curved, your feet flat on the floor, your back straight, and we'll be going over that home row positioning here in just a little bit. We're now going to talk about your keyboard in general, and I do have just a little bit of history. Computer keyboards are the successors of the 19th century typewriters. The layout, which is the location of the letters on the keyboard, has not changed since the invention of the typewriter. It is different for every country. The first computer in the 1960s required a computer keyboard which had a design that was slightly different from what is available today on the market. However, the key layout is still the same and requires training to be used efficiently. So that's what we're pretty much going to be doing today. So um, when it comes to how to use your desktop, your desktop comes with a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, both devices work together to offer a typing, editing, navigating, software environment. Um, there are some guidelines when it comes down to uh, using these kind of things. First, place the keyboard in front of you or um, on your desk. The right distance from your body um, is reached when your elbow is close to your side and your fingers reach the center of the keyboard. Um, if you are right-handed, place the mouse on the right-hand side of the keyboard. Have the mouse as close as possible to the keyboard, allowing your hand to move the mouse without touching the keyboard with your thumb. When your hand moves from the mouse to the keyboard, the elbow should stay close to your side. If you have a palm rest, use it between keying tasks, not while typing. Using it while typing may increase pressure against the hand and increase the chance of injury. When mousing with your right hand, it is recommended to use the left hand side of your keyboard with your left hand. There may be specific functions, such as web navigation tools, that you can do with your left hand. This is the two-handed navigation feature, and some Logitech keyboards have this. Um, it has an ergonomic um, benefit that is explained in the downloadable desktop design and comfort. This may increase your productivity and reduce fatigue. Working, playing, communicating, this way may make more productive and uh, and may add a lot of comfort to your computing experience. So how do you use your keyboard? That's probably what you're asking me right now. So let's talk about that. Uh, the keyboard has more than 100 keys that can be typed. All these keys are located in four different areas which have different goals. Uh, the alphanumeric keypad, the typing area T, 
um, the F row function keys, the numeric keypad, and the navigation keypad. So how to position your hands on a keyboard. You can clearly see right here how we've got our hands laid out. They're telling you which finger is responsible for what on your keyboard. Uh, position your left hand on the left side of the typing area. Have your left index finger positioned above the key F. Position your right hand on the center of the typing area. Have your right index finger positioned above the J. F and J keys have a raised uh, little dot or a bar, which allows you to easily feel the keys even if you don't look at the keypad. Pad. The navigation keypad and the numeric keypad are used only with the right hand. The F row is shared between both hands. So you can clearly see here how they've got the fingers laid out and what is in charge of what. So how to type. Uh, there are two ways to type. Either a touch type with your ten fingers without looking at the keypad pad while looking at the monitor or hunt and peck. Um, which is several keys, several fingers, your eyes are looking right at the keys, and the keyboard is designed to be used with both usages. So you can very well, uh, like I was telling you earlier, go ahead and do that hunt and pack, um, or what I think I said was poke and pack, uh, but that is the same concept. Every But a ri your overall goal is to do the, um, the other version, which was... Um, the touch type, where you're not actually looking at the keyboard, you're looking straight ahead. Every finger has a dedicated position on the typing area, so that typing becomes a rapid and easy task. The following drawing shows these um, um, theatrical positions, which is up to you to follow, so we can clearly see right here um, that every finger has its own thing. Fingers must touch the center of the key and come back to a resting position. Um, on the home row, which is the third row from the bottom, as indicated, um, and we're going to be talking about that here in just a little bit, when typing, the hand should float over the keyboard. When not typing, the hand can uh, rest briefly, either on a table or a palm rest, um, and has been attached. So combination keys would be your shift, your control, your alt, and things like that. So that is an overall of your keyboard in general. So why don't you go ahead right now and pause this video and just kind of take a look at your keyboard that you're working with right now. I've included this colorful little chart just so you can kind of see, and I'm not sure what grade um, <laughs> level this is in, but I thought it was a very, very good example of where you put your fingers on the keyboard. Uh, the picture before was... Um, worked out very well but this actually has the colors of the pick of the fingers with the letters inside of them and it tells you exactly what is in control of what so I wanted to include this for you so you would have a better look at the color co um, the color coordination between the keys and your fingers okay so here's a little bit of the moment of the truth because I keep saying we're gonna go over the home row here in a little bit and I haven't to do it yet so we are gonna do that now and this is what's called your home row and that's the way that the fingers are positioned on the keyboard the ASDF and the JKL colon semicolon and we can see how that they are placed on the keyboard themselves in the picture and this is your starting point um, or your home row so anytime I say get your fingers on your home row and get ready to go, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Again, um, you'll, you'll want to try to follow the rules of keyboarding, um, the positioning of your body and things like that. So you can just do the touch type so you're not doing the punch and poke or the hunt and peck or whatever people are calling it nowadays. Um, you don't want to be that person doing that in the long run. But for now, it's not a problem and it's going to get you better familiar with your keys so don't be upset if that's what you have to do um, and just kind of just kind of look at your keyboard right now and get your fingers familiar with that home row and the laying of your fingers on the home row okay now so we're going to talk about your function keys on the keyboard um, they do have a purpose they aren't just there commonly known as function keys F1 through F12 may have a variety of different uses or no use at all Depending on the installed operating system and the software program currently open, 
uh, will change how each of these keys operate. A program is capable of not only using each of the function keys, but also combining the function keys with the Alt or the Control key. So for example, Microsoft Windows users can press Alt plus F4 to close a program currently active. Um, so I'm going to go over the function keys uh, rather quickly, and again, it, it also depends on what operating system you have. So if your keys are not doing what I say that they could be doing, it could very well be just because of the fact that um, that you have um, a different Windows program. So just keep that in mind. Um, F1 almost always is used as a help key. Almost every prog uh, program opens a help screen with this key when it's pressed. Um, the Windows key plus F1 would open the Microsoft Windows Help and Help Center. Sometimes it might even open a task pane or some type of setup. So by pushing F1, you're going to get some different options. Um, F2 in the Windows renames a highlighted icon file or folder in all versions of Windows. Um, and it may also, um, if you're pushing Alt-Control plus F2, it opens a document um, window in Microsoft Word. So if you're in Microsoft Word, then you would have that function. Control plus F2 displays the print preview window in Microsoft Word. So if you're in Word, you would have the, that option. Uh, you can also quickly rename a selected file or folder with F2. Um, F3 often opens a search feature for many programs, including Microsoft Windows, when at the desktop, Windows desktop. Um, the, the Shift plus F3 will change the text in Microsoft Word from upper to lowercase or a capital letter at the beginning of every word. Uh, the Windows key plus F3 opens the Advanced Find window in Microsoft Outlook, if you use that. Okay, so F4 um, will open Find window in uh, the Windows 95 to XP versions. Open the address bar in Windows um, Explorer and Internet Explorer. Also, we'll repeat the last action performed if you have Word 2000+. Plus. Um, Alt plus F4 closes a program window currently active in Microsoft Windows. Uh, pushing the Control plus F4 closes the, uh, closes the open window within the current active window in Microsoft Windows. So if you can follow all that, um, each one of these has their own functions. So F5 um, is on all modern internet browsers. So by pressing F5, it will refresh or reload the page or document. Uh, F5 will also open the Find, Replace, and Go To window in Microsoft Word. And in PowerPoint, F5 starts a slideshow. Uh, in F6, you can move the cursor to the address bar in the internet, Mozzarella Firefox, and most other internet browsers. Control plus Shift plus F6 opens to another open Microsoft Word document. So you can open another document using that. Um, F7 is commonly used for spell check and grammar check on a document in Microsoft programs such as Word and Outlook. Uh, Shift plus F7 runs a thesaurus check on the word highlighted. Um, and F8 is a function key used to enter the Windows startup menu, commonly used to access access Windows safe mode. Um, F9 is a refresh document to Microsoft Word. Um, it also allows you to send and receive email in Microsoft Outlook. It opens the measurements toolbar in Quark 5.0. And um, the F10 key in Microsoft Window activates the menu bar of an open application. Shift plus F10 is um, the same as right clicking on a highlighted icon file or internet link. F10 also accesses the hidden recovery um, on HP and Sony computers. F11 is full screen mode in all modern internet browsers. Control plus F11 is as computer is starting to access the hidden recovery. Um, those are for most of your Dell computers. F11 also accesses the hidden recovery in eMachines, Gateways, and uh, Lenovo. Um, also, F12, we're, we're down to F12 now, is the open and save um, 
in Microsoft Word. Control plus F12 opens a document in Word. Shift plus F12 saves the, the document in Word. Control, Shift, and F12 prints a document in Word. And it also, F12 is a preview of page in Microsoft Expressions Web. Um, you can also open Firebug um, and so forth. Um, there, we do know we no longer have F13 through F24. Um, these were early IBM computers. Um, however, because the keyboards are no longer used, they are no longer listed. So that is a rough roundabout of what all of your function keys can do for you. Um, we don't use all the functions like we we probably could. Uh, but it's good to know what these all mean. So if you want to, go ahead and experiment a little bit with your function keys. Okay, so now we're going to go through some of these um, keys that we will probably be using a little bit more commonly. Uh, for example, using our backspace, this is actually de going to delete a character to the left of the cursor. So we can see down here at the bottom, and it also shows you on the keypad where you can find it on your keypad. Uh, but you can see down at the bottom where it says Steven. Um, you can use your arrow keys to get you through some of those letters. And then by hitting the backspace, it's going to take that letter away from on the left of the cursor. So uh, go ahead right now and just minimize this. And if you have a Microsoft Word program, go ahead and open that and create a document for yourself and just kind of just start typing. And then you can learn how to do that backspacing. But we're also going to be doing a little bit of that when we do some practice typing here in just a little bit. So I wanted you to get familiar with what the backspace does and where it's located. Uh, using your cap locks is pretty easy. Uh, the caps, cap locks capitalizes all letters. If you are just wanting to capitalize the very first letter of a sentence, you could also push shift at the same time that you push that letter, and it will capitalize it. Or you can just hit that caps lock, push that letter, and then make sure you hit caps lock again to turn it off. If not, then all of your letters will be capital. So there's a couple of ways there that you could actually create a capital letter. Um, the first way, obviously, would be to push on that caps lock and capitalize whichever letters you want. But remember, you're going to want to push it to make them lowercase again. Um, or if you were just wanting to do the first letter of a sentence, you could just push the shift button and that letter instead of caps. So they both kind of work together. Um, the shift and the caps will do the same thing. However, with cap locks, caps lock, you don't have to uh, push anything with it. You just push that and it automatically makes your letters capital. So go ahead right now and continue working with that Word document like I'd asked you to do. Um, or if you have open office or something, just get yourself typing on something so that way you're able to use your cap locks. Your delete button. Your delete button um, deletes a character to the right of the cursor. So our backspace took it from the left, and now our delete will take it from the right. So um, typically, your delete would be around where your home key is, your end key, your insert key. So if you can't find it, just, well, you can find it. Just look on your keyboard all the way around, and you're going to be able to identify where that delete is. And go ahead and get back onto your Word document and just kind of practice using that. Using the enter key is pretty easy. Um, what the enter key does is it completes a command and moves the cursor down to the next line. Um, tab can do that as well, and we're going to talk about that. But um, this will also apply an action. So if you are on the internet and you're in a search engine and you're looking up something, by just hitting enter, that will get you where you need to be. So if you want to at this time, go ahead and get yourself on the internet, get on a search engine, type in uh, uh, typing exercises and then hit enter and you'll def it'll that does the same thing as using your mouse to push the, push that search so make sure that um, that you hit the enter and give that a try 
So now we're going to talk about using the shift key. Um, the shift key is used for a lot of things. Um, if you press and hold this key, then press another key, it'll actually capitalize a letter, and we had talked about that earlier, or it's going to insert one of those special symbols, and we see those symbols on our top row where our numbers are, right above our numbers, and I have it circled here for you so you can see. We can see that um, those are our special characters or our symbols. By clicking on the shift and then pushing that, we are able to get... Um, not the number, but the special symbol. And that goes along the same lines for any of the keys that have two different functions on them. So by hitting shift, you're going to be able to get the other function um, than, than what you would get by just pushing on it alone. So go ahead right now and get into your Word document that you had open and that you were typing earlier to do the deleting and the backspacing. And just practice using your shift keys. Using the tab on your keyboard um, allows you to indent when you are typing something in a document, or it also allows you to move to another space. So that picture underneath, um, underneath our keyboard just kind of shows us that this particular website had a bunch of entries that we're supposed to enter. By clicking tab, I can get to each one of those boxes a little bit easier than having to put my mouse in each one and clicking on it. So go ahead right now and practice using your tab and getting yourself familiar with the way that the tab works. All right, so coming up, I've got a video just recapping us all the way up to this point on uh, things that we've already learned before we start doing some practice typing. So I hope you enjoy the video. How to type. Whether you need to type a resume, a letter, or a bibliography, it can get done fast if you learn how to control the keys efficiently. You will need a keyboard or typewriter, patience, time to practice, and a computer with internet access. Step one, position your fingers on the keyboard. Put your little left finger on the A and your right little finger on the semicolon. Lay your fingers one at a time on each consecutive key and place your thumbs on the space bar. The F and J keys on most keyboards have small bumps to easily identify where your two pointer fingers should stay without having to look down. Step two, learn what fingers control which keys. The left index finger controls the F, G, R, T, 4, 5, V, and B. The left middle finger controls the D, E, 3, and C. The left ring finger controls the S, W, 2, and X. The left little finger controls the A, Q, 1, Z, and Shift. Step 3. Learn what keys the fingers on the right hand type. The fingers on the right hand control the same pattern of keys as you learned on the left side. Step 4. Press the space bar with your right thumb. Step 5. Master the shift keys with your little fingers. Press the shift key while simultaneously pressing the letter of choice to type a capital letter. If the letter is pressed by the right hand, use the left shift key, and vice versa. Step 6. Sit up straight with both feet on the floor. Position your chair and keyboard so your arms are at a 90 degree angle and are parallel to your legs. Keep your elbows next to your body and your head straight. Try not to look down at the keys. Step 7. Practice typing. You can learn for free online by visiting websites with touch typing tutorials. Learning the art of typing will save you tons of time over the hunt and peck method. Did you know? The letters on old typewriters used to be listed alphabetically. In the late 1800s, Christopher Latham Scholes rearranged the keys to prevent jamming. So now you should be better familiar with your keyboard. Um, we've gone over the function keys, your home row, those special keys, backspace, delete, tab, enter. Um, and now it's going to be time for us to go ahead and do some activities. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and get yourself on the internet and we can actually do this together. And in your search engine, I would like for you to type in uh, typing exercises and I will do that with you right now and then you're going to hit enter and as you can see you're going to get several 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 
different kinds. Uh, the one that we're going to kind of play with right now is the Beginner Typing Lesson 1, Learn Typing. So learntyping.org is where we are going to go. So we're going to click on that. And it automatically took us to the beginner typing lesson one. Um, if you were ready to go forward and you had already done one, over here on the left hand side you can clearly see that there are other ones. You can go to step uh, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, five, six, and seven. Also you've got your advanced um, and it goes on and on and on. Now notice as I um, scroll up and down on this particular website that my keyboard which is right here on my screen um, isn't even moving so this always tells me where my home row is and where my finger should be in my home row so if I ever forget or I get confused I can always refer back to the keyboard that is with me throughout the whole lesson so the first thing that you would do is start with the quick start and it tells you here that you're going to want to place your left hand over the keys A, S, D, and F. So that would be your fourth finger which is pinky, third, second, and first. And then of course your right hand would be first for the J, second for the K, and that's your pointer, your index, your uh, your other fingers and so forth and so on. So we're going to actually start with the left hand and as you can see here um, it has them there for you so you go ahead and you put your fingers uh, like the keyboard shows you up in up here and you just type them in so it's A S D F space A S D F space A S D F space and you get the point. We just keep going and we do that and we're just working with our left hand right right now. So if we go down to the next row, you can either do that by putting your mouse in there and clicking or you could just push the tab button on your keyboard and it would take you down to the next level. So now you're going to go backwards. F D S A space F D S A space F D S A space and that just continues on and on until you are done doing that. Um, the next one we're going to do is going to be our right hand and I'm just going to tab on down. So now we're just working with our right hand and we've got JKL semicolon J, oh, space, JKL semicolon space, JKL semicolon space, um, JKL and you just keep doing that until you kind of feel a groove and you're getting comfortable. Okay. So then, of course, we tab down to the next line, and we're going to do it backwards, same hand. We're working with our right hand, so now we're going to go backwards, and we just keep going until we are done going. Um, so now we can click tab, and now we're working with both hands. And we can see here, um, it's FD space, FDS space, FDSA space, JK, which is our right and so on and it just this way we are able to practice now keep in mind that when you're doing this if you see a mistake that you've made you can always push that backspace and that's what I'm doing right now and it just takes those out of there so you can go back and make the correction to accommodate whatever it is they're asking you to do all right, so now we've done the left hand, the right hand, and both hands. So if we hit tab and we come down, we're now adding a new letter. And we learned from our chart before that this would be our first finger that is now in charge of F, T, and G on our left hand. So when we go to do our, our um, lesson, a little bit down below here, we can see that we're using both pointers. G on the left, H on the right space. G on the left, H on the right space. And this is just your pointer finger. And it's just getting you familiar with those grooves. And you just continue to do that. And then you would go down to the TH. T is the left hand, H is the right space, T is the left hand, H is the right space. And we just continue to do that. And then you can see that now we're going to even be adding more and um, it just keeps going and this is just lesson one so if we wanted to work on lesson two we could push on lesson two and now we're actually getting into some words 
okay we're not going to do that here in class right now uh, but this would be something that you would want to do on your own time and again remember that this is the um, learntyping.org is the website and uh, again if you just type in um, typing exercises in your search engine you are going to get um, a ton of them to help you with practicing your keyboarding skills so you are definitely on your way to being a very successful person as far as keyboarding goes and your computer so don't give up and keep trying I have provided you with a list of websites for free typing practice. The one we used was Learn to Type, but there are several, several, several of them. Um, in your search engine, whether it's Yahoo, Google, or Bing, you can type in the following programs, or you can just type in free typing, exer free typing exercises or programs, and a bunch will become available to you. So I wanted you to know where I found that. I showed it to you on um, our screen video, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that there were other ones out there, and just by typing in free typing exercises, you're going to get a lot of different options for yourself. If you're a part of the computer class pass, your secret code is, I've got my keyboard a working and my mouse a clicking. Give me that code so I can get you marked down for taking this class and be on your way to prizes and incentives. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, our mouse and what all the functions are that our mouse can do. This picture here is just the basic parts of a mouse and we can clearly see that the basic parts are your left click, your right click, your scroll button, and where you rest um, your palms. So the left click offers you some different options. Uh, first it has a single click which this is a press and release from the left button. This is used to select an option or an item. Um, that also has the double click which is quickly press the left button twice. This is used to open documents or programs. And then of course you have the click and hold which is pressing the left button and hold it down while dragging it across the screen. This is kind of like your drop and drag. Um, and then of course you have your right click and by right clicking press and release the right button. This will provide a list of shortcuts. Um, it gives you a menu. Uh, to exit the list of shortcuts, just simply click left click anywhere else away from the list. So no matter what you're in, the internet, Microsoft Word, uh, PowerPoint, anything that you are in on your desktop, if you right click, you're going to get a menu. Or, or some type of shortcut list. Um, and it is a very, very good idea to get yourself familiar with right click because um, right click is going to be your best friend when it comes to a lot of things that you're going to want to do um, that you're not sure how you can do certain things. Just by right clicking, you're going to solve a lot of those mysterious questions that you have with yourself on how to do certain things. So, um, And then of course you have your scroll wheel which is in the middle. This is the rotating button between the two click buttons and it's used to scroll up and down pages. So instead of going over to your scroll bar and using your mouse to have it scroll down, you can just use that wheel in the middle of your mouse and it'll scroll through it for you. So go ahead right now and just minimize uh, the video and get on your computer uh, whether you just want to be on the desktop or you want to go to the internet Internet, it doesn't matter and practice the left click the single the double and the click and drag um, practice your right clicking and using your scroll wheel all right so how do you use a mouse a mouse is designed to be handled with one hand in order to move the pointer or it's also called the cursor the little arrow on the computer screen. A standard mouse has two buttons and a roller, um, which the roller is also called a scroll wheel. Um, so how do you position your hand on the mouse? We're going to actually um, see a picture of that here in a minute, but you would place your hand on top of the mouse and grip the mouse um, at your preference. If you are right-handed, the index finger should click the left button. Uh, you're now ready to mouse click. Uh, how to mouse click? Um, Mousing should require only the motion of the fingers, not the whole hand. Look at the pointer on the screen and move the mouse between your thumb and pinky fingers according to your desired location. Uh, remember that the distance to reach an object on the screen is very small for the mouse and your hand on the table. 
For maximum precision, the two fingers should move less than a millimeter. You can configure the pointer speed by launching the mouse properties windows in the control panel or with the manufacturer drivers. Uh, typically, you would just use the defaulted cursor or mouse, um, the pointer on there, but you can go into those properties and reset them if you need to. The left button of the mouse is used to click on a software button um, on the screen or an internet link or a web page to launch either a function or a window. The right button is used to open a dynamic context menu close to the pointer position on the screen from which commands can be launched and then disappear. Uh, the scroll wheel between the two buttons on the mouse replaces the vertical scroll bar movement on the window to navigate up and down, neither on a page, a spreadsheet, a picture, etc. Um, so you usually all the buttons are programmable to change their settings and functions depending on your preference. Also, many mice now have additional buttons like an internet back in the thumb scoop of the mouse. We're just talking about the basic mouse right now, but they do make the mouse now that has some extra buttons and features and things that we can do from the mouse. Um, but for the most part, it's just uh, it's just going to be the basic mouse is what we're talking about right now. So just go ahead and, and kind of play around with your mouse a little bit. Okay, so now we can clearly see what I was talking about in the last slide of how you should position your hand and moving and holding the mouse. Uh, the mouse gives you contr control over your computer. With the mouse in your hand, you cause the on-screen arrow to move around your computer display. It is based on the point and click philosophy. You move your mouse to a point where you want something to happen, then you click to make that event take place. Sometimes you click once, sometimes you click twice, and sometimes you hold down the mouse while your event is happening. Uh, most mouse devices give you two opportunities for clicking. They are both right and left um, areas to depress. The left area is generally used for issuing commands to your computer. To access special menus, uh, you would use the right-click portion of your mouse. Uh, when you use your mouse for word processing, you will find that it sometimes changes shape. Please look at it. Um, so just be uh, aware of that. You can actually go into the command settings and change that if you want. Um, if you press down on the left uh, mouse twice in a rapid um, motion, it produces a double click. So it would be click, 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 click. Generally, your double click is open on screen object. Um, and this uh, My Computer is a good example of double clicking to get that open. Microsoft Word, double clicking to get that open. Um, if you click on a dimmed object, your action will open the file. Sometimes the mouse uh, makes things happen simply by moving around the screen. A mouse over occurs when an on-screen image changes as your mouse travels over it. Um, so we are actually going to be doing some exercises where we're going to have an opportunity to see what that looks like. Um, as you practice with your mouse, you will notice two other characters, uh, characteristics. One is... Um, the key depress and the key release. Um, by clicking once, that depresses the left mouse um, in the flash animation file. So that's getting a little bit deep for us, but uh, I think you get the idea of holding and moving your mouse and what the left click does and what the right click does and the parts of your mouse. Um, coming up next, I've got a video for you. Um, it's just going to kind of recap everything that we've talked about um, on how to use your mouse. So enjoy the video. There are three main components to the mouse, a left button, a right button, and a wheel or trackball in the center. We will learn all about the mouse in this video. We place our index finger on the left side of the mouse and our middle finger on the right side of the mouse. Our thumb, ring finger, and pinky are used to hold the mouse tightly. To make it easier for you to click, make sure your index and middle fingers are slightly curved. We use our index finger to left click. Make sure to hold the mouse tightly while clicking. This will prevent you from accidentally clicking on the wrong thing. And this is also the button that we use most often. The arrow you see on your screen is called a cursor. When you move the mouse, the cursor moves with it. 
When you left click, you are telling the computer where you want its attention, kind of like your pointing finger. For example, if you wanted to open up a program, you would move your cursor to the program and left click to open it. Also, be aware of your arrow at all times because you don't want to accidentally click on something you didn't want to click on. We use our middle finger to right click. Again, make sure to hold the mouse tightly while clicking. This button is used to bring up a list of options. The options will vary depending on where you click. For example, I am clicking on the desktop. When I right click, I get a small list of options. Remember, only right click to bring up the list. After that, we continue to left click as usual. We also use our index finger to double click. Double clicking is when we click twice, somewhat fast. It is also used to open up files, folders, and programs. Right now I'm showing you how to double click on the desktop, but I actually want to show you how to double click to open up a folder. Uh, some people actually make the mistake of double clicking and moving at the same time and wonder why it didn't open. So just make sure that when you double click, you hold down the mouse so you don't move it. Notice the tiny ball or wheel in the center of your mouse? This is called a trackball or wheel which is used to scroll through pages. Just glide your index finger over the ball to move it up and down. Here I am showing you how to scroll through a page on the internet. As you can see the page is moving up and down and I can do this by using the trackball on my mouse. Keep in mind we are not clicking on the ball. We are simply gliding our finger to roll the ball. Okay, so that is it. Remember, the mouse is simply a pointing device. You move your mouse and the arrow will follow on the screen. If you do make a mistake, it's okay. Making mistakes is just part of the process. Just know that whatever it is, it can be fixed. You can watch this video as many times as you like. You can take notes while you watch the video as well, so you can refer to them while you're practicing. Take it day by day and you will get to a point where you will feel more comfortable with technology. Thanks for watching and good luck. Okay, so now we're going to work on some mouse exercises, kind of like we did with our typing exercises. So we're going to get on the internet and we're going to go to Google and we're just going to type in mouse exercises and hit enter. And we can see just like we did with the uh, typing exercises that we have several that we can choose from. I am just going to pick the very first one. And the first thing we're going to do is place the mouse. So like you can see, I, can, I just pushed on placing the mouse. And this is letting us know that we're not going to click anything. We're just going to put these numbers on top and watch them disappear and reappear. This gets us familiar with um, pointing to something on a website, in our documents, whatever we're wanting to do. It gets us familiar with the point aspect. So once we're done with that, we're going to click next. And now they want us to put them, um, they want us to put our mouse on top of them in order so that they will disappear. Again, I am not pushing anything. I am just setting it on top. Um, if I wanted to do it again, I could just go back. And it allows me to go back to the one we did previously. I can go forward and do this again if I want to. Um, once you're comfortable with placing the mouse on the pointer, you're then going to learn how to do the single click. So just single clicking is pushing one time on each one of these items. And you may not be able to hear the sounds, but each one of these animals is actually making a sound right now. Um, and if you click on them again, you would hear the sounds again. Uh, but I don't think you can hear it from my end, but you should be able to hear it from yours. And once you're done with that, you're going to click next. Now we're going to try that double click uh, right here in the blue circle. So we're just click, click. And if you do it right, it has a little message that comes up and congratulates you. Um, and you can just keep doing it to get yourself better familiar. If you're having a problem with it, um, you can go ahead and see me on a personal level. We can do a one-on-one -on -one appointment and uh, I can help you with double clicking. But um, it's very quick and fast, very rapid. Click, click. And you get your little uh, message that comes up and then click, click. And we would just keep doing that. So the next thing is they want us to move these um, trash articles into the trash can. Right now they're not very particular about how, they, how we get them in there. They just want them in there. So we're just going to drag them over. And by dragging, what I'm doing is I'm just left clicking on my item. And I'm keeping my left click down and I'm able to move my object. And it puts them all in there. And my trash can goes on. 
and you actually get a little uh, music that plays too. Now they are being particular and they want us to put them over the top of the trash can instead of anywhere you need to put them on top and again that's just left clicking and dragging and now they've made it a little bit more difficult they want us to put it through the hoop and over the trash can so we're going to do that with each one of these because if we try to do it any other way it isn't going to let us it won't even let us get through the brick wall so make sure you're doing that and then we're going to click next and now it wants us to match our numbers on this side with the word numbers on this side so we've got one and I'm just dragging like I did a minute ago until I get them all completed and it tells me I'm an expert and you can be too and here's where we can write if we want to it's showing us how we can do that and I'm thanking you for being with me today. I'm not very good at this, so I do apologize. Um, but without you, I wouldn't have a reason to have these classes, so I appreciate you being here today. And um, I can clear it, and I can use a different color if I want to, and draw what I want. I can add more colors. But this is just getting you familiar, and this is just holding down my left click and moving it around. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to use your mouse. And again, you can use any of those. We kind of ran through this quickly, but you can use any of the ones that we saw on the website. So go ahead and give them a try so you can get better familiar with your mouse. I've come up with a few websites for you so you can find some of those mouse exercises. Uh, that first one, mouse exercises at uh, seniornet.org, that's the one that we were just doing. Um, they also have free mouse exercises, practice your mousing skills with the following mouse exercise, um, mouse skills, mouse tutorials, learn to use your mouse, or you can just type in mouse exercises in your search engine and you'll get a lot of results. So don't just go with what we did in class today. Try some of those other ones because they probably have different levels and things like that. So make sure you're getting your full experience of your mouse. Okay, take a deep breath, relax, sit back, because you did it. Congratulations. And you'll be typing 50 plus words a minute before you know it. Promise you. And you're going to be flying right through all those exercises with your mouse. Um, and remember, if it wasn't for you, we'd have no reason to have these classes. So I want to thank you for watching. If you need any kind of additional help, um, whether it's this stream class or any other classes that are being offered, or maybe no classes at all, something unrelated, technology, computer related though, give me a call and I can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment for you. They are all free. All the computer classes that are offered are free. The stream class you're watching right now is free. And make sure that you're listening for that secret code to get credit for the computer class pass incentive program. That way you can be on your way to fabulous prizes and so forth and so on. So again, take a deep breath. Relax. You did it. Congratulations. You made it through using your keyboard and mouse. Pat yourself on the back and go get some tea because you're all done. This class could not have been made possible without the following websites, images, and information. Thank you to the following websites, uh, pictures, images, and um, information. Without them, we could not have had this class.